今日冇。Let us stand. Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Processional hymn.
very well, warm welcome to each and every one of you, not only because of the uh, temperature is still very high, but that we are gathered here today to celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord. And so may our hearts be filled with his Holy Spirit and be transfigured with him. Let us have a moment of silence to prepare our hearts. <coughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. When Christ appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. As he is pure, all who have grasped this hope make themselves pure. So let us confess our sins that we may have his spirit and image in us. Please be seated. Your unfailing kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, and your justice as the great deep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Lord, have mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Give what we have been, amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us stand. Glory to God in the highest.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. The collect for this Sunday of the transfiguration of our Lord. Father in heaven, whose Son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross, that in the world to come we may see him as he is, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 to 10, 13 to 14. While I was watching, thrones were set in place, and one most venerable took his seat. His robe was white as snow, the hair of his head as pure as wool. His throne was a blaze of flames, its real were a burning fire. A stream of fire poured out, issuing from his presence. A thousand thousand waited on him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was in section, and the books lay open. I was gazing into the vision of the night, when I saw coming on the clouds of heaven, as it were a son of man. He came to the one most venerable and was led into his presence. On him was conferred rule, honor, and kingship, and all peoples, nations, and languages became his servants. His rule is an everlasting rule which will never pass away, and his kingship will never come to an end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand. The responsorial psalm will be read alternately. Yahweh is king. Let earth rejoice. The many isles be glad. Cloud, black clouds enfold him. Sinful justice and judgment, the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him, set ablaze his enemies around the world. His lightning flashes light up the world. The earth sees it and quakes. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his saving justice. All nations shall see glory. Shame on all who serve images, who pride themselves on their idols. Bow down to him, all ye gods. Zion hears and is glad. The daughters of Zion exult because of your judgment, Yahweh. For you are Yahweh most high over all the earth, far transcending all gods. Yahweh loves those who hate evil. He keeps safe his faithful, rescues them from the clutches of the wicked. Like dawns for the upright and joy for honest hearts. Rejoice in Yahweh, you are upright. Praise his unforgettable holiness. Glory be to the Father. be seated. The second reading is taken from 2 Peter, chapter 1, 
verses 16 to 19. When we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, were, were it not so lavishly repeating cleverly invented myths? No, we had seen his majesty with our own eyes. He was honored and glorified by God the Father when a voice came to him from the transcendent glory. This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my flavor. We ourselves heard this voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have confirmation of the words of the prophets and you will be right to pay attention to it as to a lamp for lighting a way through the dark until the dawn comes and the morning star raises in your minds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand. Bless thou, O Lord, thy holy gospel, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Be with, you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. <laughs> now, about eight days after this has been said, he took with him Peter. John and James, and went up the mountain to pray. And it happened that as he was praying, the aspect of his face was changed, and his clothing became sparkling white. And suddenly, 
there were two men talking to him. They were Moses and Elijah appearing in glory. And they were speaking of his passing, which he was to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companion were heavy with sleep, but they woke up and saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And as these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. As he was saying this, a cloud came and covered them with shadow. And when they went into the cloud, the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The disciples kept silence and at that time told no one what they had seen. This is the gospel of Christ our Lord. of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A very good morning to all of you, those of you who are joining us online. Today we celebrate the Transfiguration. And what significance has it for us today? Peter, at that time, when he witnessed it, he misunderstood it. And he thought, ah, you know, uh, Jesus is actually reinstating the importance of the Old Testament revelation on Mount Sinai and in the wilderness. And he immediately, after witnessing the fact that Moses and Elijah, the prophet, was with Jesus, he immediately told Jesus, ah, it's time for us to celebrate the festival of Sukkoth. In other words, the festival of the tabernacles. To remember Israel's suffering, but at the same time, to remember the revelation of God to Moses on Mount Sinai, giving the Ten Commandments. But as we always know, Peter quite often make mistakes. And his biggest mistake is always to think that Jesus was reinstating the importance of Judaism. But then immediately after Peter said this, let us build three tabernacles to commemorate the festival of the Sukkoth, God responded immediately by sending a cloud to cover them. And immediately, Moses and Elijah disappeared. And Jesus was left alone with his disciples, and the clouds disappeared. And there was bright sunlight, but immediately God said, This is my son. This is my son, uh, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So in other words, God is telling Peter and the other disciples, that what they are witnessing is not the reinstating of the old Jewish festival of the tent, or Sukkoth. Neither are they commemorating 
the experience of the Jews when they left Egypt at Mount Sinai and in the wilderness before they entered the promised land. What God is saying is this, this is a new period, this is a new time. And what Jesus is bringing is the complete salvation of all people and that he himself will be the sacrificial lamb in the Passover to come. And that Jesus himself, as the one and only true sacrifice, offered that the Jews and Christians no longer need to repeat this festival of tents or Sukkot, nor the celebration of the old Passover. And for us today, as a Christian church, as the Anglican church, we also are reminded of two other texts. The text in the book of Daniel that reminds us that a new age has come. A new age that will begin with the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this was what Moses and Elijah spoke to Jesus about. That in the coming days in Jerusalem, they will be brought out of Jerusalem. So in other words, they will be brought out of the old city of God to come to the mountain of God to witness the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ and his enthronement at the right-hand side of God. And this is where the text of Daniel becomes so important to remind us that Christianity is not merely a reform of Judaism, but a break away from Judaism. And it is established on the death and resurrection of Christ, the one and only true sacrifice. And that we worship Christ now as the Son of Man. Now, the term Son of Man in the book of Daniel is a unique term because in the Hebrew language, whenever we use the word the son of a donkey, it means a foal, all right? Uh, and if you are called a son of man, it means you are a man, nothing else. But in the book of Daniel, the term Son of Man now takes on a new significance because our Lord Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, is the Son of Man, the new man, the man who will have eternal life, the man who obeys God and now rules as king, the true king, not a human king, not the human king who is supposed to come and is supposed to be the descendant of David. The new king will break all racial barriers. The new king will rule over a people that is both Jew and Gentiles. The new king is a king who will rule fairly and justly. But most importantly, his rule will be everlasting. And therefore in the Psalms, we celebrate this and we are told that God is the God who loves those who had evil and rescues those who are persecuted. In the new kingdom of God, those who are rescued are rescued from the hands of Satan, from the hands of the devil, from the hands of man himself. Now behind this, behind this is an implication. The implication is this. Now if you read the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 3 to chapter 11, what was and what is man's primal sin? What was mankind's primal sin? What was the sin that caused him to reject God? the only true God. His sin is that he refused 
to be the second person. Mankind wants to be number one. Mankind wants to be God. Mankind wants eternal life. And mankind wants the power to determine what is good and evil. And so you have mankind stealing and eating from the fruit, the forbidden fruit that distinguishes good and evil. And that was why mankind was trying to steal eternal life from the gods and from God himself and therefore forever forbidden to re-enter the Garden of Eden. And so what did mankind do? If you continue to read the stories from Genesis chapter 5 to uh, uh, chapter 11 onwards, but more so, but more so immediately after mankind was kicked out of the Garden of Eden, the story that we read in Genesis chapter 4 is even more interesting. That when Eve gave birth, to her first son, what did she say? Now the Hebrew phrase is an interesting phrase. It could be translated either positively or negatively. And this is done on purpose. On purpose because the writer of that witness wants each and every one of us to make a decision. What Eve said could be translated as God is with me. He gave me the power to bear a child in obedience to God to carry out his will and therefore God is with me. And reading it this way it would mean that Eve is saying, although man had tried to disobey God, but mankind now repents and will be with God, but not God. Or the same Hebrew sentence could be read differently. I now have the power to create. I created man. And I am God. The key is the preposition on how you read it. Because the preposition ber could either mean I am God or God is with me. And that's a problem with Hebrew prepositions. And this was done on purpose. And so on the day of transfiguration, we are told and we are challenged do you still want to be God? Are you still trying to steal the power of God for yourselves? Or do you acknowledge that there is only one true God? And by his death and resurrection, you will have eternal life. And therefore, you will be like God and with God. Why was Elijah there? Why was Elijah standing there with Christ? We know that Moses was there to not only tell Christ of his future death and resurrection, but at the same time, the presence of Moses symbolizes and reminds the disciples that Moses was the only one who was able to stand and face God face to face and not die. And that Moses was the giver of the law. And that Christ now will be the new giver of the law, the bringer of the new law and a new covenant. But why Elijah? Now if you read the Old Testament and the witnesses in the Old Testament, we are told that the only person in the Old Testament that did not die and was given eternal life because he was taken up to heaven on a chariot 
was Elijah. And so the significance of Elijah standing with our Lord Jesus Christ is to let us all know that in the transfiguration of Christ, in his death and resurrection, Elijah now represents the new mankind. Mankind who will be given eternal life. And mankind need not steal it from God ever again because he will be with God and like God. And all he needs to do is to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and to believe that by the death and resurrection of Christ, you and I will be given eternal life and you and I will be with God and like God. But what is even more important is this. We are told, we are told in the gospel lesson and in the other two texts, the condition, the precondition of us achieving the status of being a new mankind like Elijah with eternal life is that not only do we obey the laws that God has given us now, the new laws that God has given us now through Jesus Christ, but also to carry his cross so that you and I will continue the work of our Lord Jesus Christ to proclaim his gospel, to proclaim both by words, in our sharing our faith with others, in our Bible study class groups and in our prayer groups, in our place of work, but also in our works of helping the poor to help them find a home, to help them find medical care, to help them live in dignity rather than in poverty, to help them to be able to make a living with their own hands and their own minds rather than to be dependent on charity. There's nothing wrong with charity because we still need charity. But if charity enslaves, if charity enslaves and turns a person into a parasite and forever dependent on the source of charity, then that charity fails. Charity not only uplifts, charity sets free. And it sets free when it enables the person to be able to become independent not only to take care of themselves and their families, but to continue to help others and set them free. Why has the United Nations Development Program failed? Immediately after the devastation of the Second World War, the United Nations was not only formed, but it began to help the poor nations. But then their development program turned into a disaster, precisely because it made these poorer nations dependent upon the Western nations, upon the richer nations. And as a result, the poorer nations were forever dependent upon the resources that were given through the United Nations. And these poorer nations never recovered. And this is the lesson to be learned. And this is the lesson that Christ is telling us. That if we are to help, if we carry the cross of Christ, we must therefore enable others whom we help carry that cross of Christ too. And the only way they could carry that cross is when they can stand on their own two feet. And when they themselves can become the source not only of new hope, but also of independence. 
of the ability not only to feed themselves and their family, but also to help others. And this is what that movie, Paying Forward, is all about. To help others so that they themselves can help others. And this is the meaning of our transfiguration that we are celebrating today. Amen. Let us stand, and with the words of the Nicene Creed, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord of glory, it's good that we are here. In peace we make our prayer to you. In trust we confirm our faith to you. Help us to set our faces steadfastly to where you would have us go. Lord, look with favour. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favour on your church, proclaiming your beloved Son to the world and listening to the prompting of her spirit. May she be renewed in holiness that she may reflect your glory. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favor on the nations of the world, scarred by hatred, strife, and war. May they be healed by the touch of your hand. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favor on those in need and distress, suffering as your son has suffered, and waiting for the salvation you promise. May the day break and Christ the morning star bring them to the light of his presence. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, it's good if we suffer with you so that we shall be glorified with you. According to your promise, bring all Christ's brothers and sisters to see him with their own eyes in majesty and to change into his likeness from glory to glory. To him be praise, dominion and worship now and for all eternity. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of, of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen.
Let us stand. Christ will transfigure our human body and give it a form like that of his own glorious body. We are the body of Christ. We share his peace. The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The Offertory. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Offertory here. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad.
Holy God, receive all we bring before you this day. Bring us also to that radiant glory which we see in the transfigured <coughs> face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to you, O God, forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this day he revealed his glory before his chosen witnesses, and filled with divine splendor the human flesh in which he is one with us. So he prepared his disciples to bear the scandal of the to bear the scandal of the cross and show that in the church his body the same glory would be fulfilled that shone forth from him its head and so with joyful hearts we echo on earth the songs of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory without end. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, but above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus your Son. 
For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Blessed Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, according to his command, O Father, And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, that by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. seated. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we, who are partakers at this table, reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life, and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Let us stand for the blessing. Christ, whose glory fills the sky, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Amen. Christ, the day spring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. By the appearance on earth of our Saviour Jesus Christ, God has spoken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For though darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the nations, the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. By the presence on earth of our Saviour Jesus Christ, God has broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. In the name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Hello, uh, welcome back everyone. Are there any new people here today? Uh, well, probably not, but uh, in, in any case, uh, there will be a tea corner uh, at the end of the, of the, uh, of the uh, surface and then, you know, you're welcome to join and then we, we can all have a chat. Um, so, uh, as you can see, there are probably fewer people uh, today uh, because of summer holidays and there's also a, a Sunday school break uh, during the summer. And just a reminder, Sunday school will resume on the 10th of September. And on that same day, um, there will be a commissioning of Sunday school teachers and then I think there will be a retreat uh, for, for Sunday school teachers and, and servers. So, uh, uh, and, and we have uh, actually a very busy uh, schedule at the end of August and September as well. So apart from the 10th of September, there's also um, our 10th anniversary celebration lunch, which is on the 27th of August, uh, just before the start of the school. Um, and and um, Bishop Timothy and Dean Frankie and also uh, Bishop Lewis Joe will be here uh, for the service and then followed by a lunch at the Glass House. Uh, please do sign up. Um, I don't think the Google form is ready yet, um, but we will circulate that as soon as possible uh, for everybody to sign up to that lunch. And then after, the week after, um, as I was saying, uh, we, we have a very busy schedule. The week after, on the 3rd of September, um, it will be followed by the uh, uh, commissioning of working group and chapel choir. And it will, uh, will be Dean Frankie again and with the Archbishop, uh, 
uh, Andrew Chan. Um, so, so he will be here. Archbishop Chan probably comes only like uh, once every two years. So um, if you do want to meet him, uh, he'll be here on the 3rd of September. And then he'll also be joining us for lunch. Uh, so it will be in the room where we had the sports day. Um, so, so there'll be two lunches, one at the Glass House on the 27th of August. And the second lunch will be in the in the room where we have the sports day on the 3rd of September with Archbishop Chan. And then uh, again, there will be a lot of um, celebrations uh, on the inauguration of the province of Hong Kong Sing Kong Hui. Uh, there, there will be a Thanksgiving service on the 23rd of October. Um, and followed by a Thanksgiving dinner on, at the Ocean Park Marriott. So if you if you do want to sign up, you can sign up online. And then there's also a provincial sports carnival on the 11th of November, uh, which uh, we will be joining Holy Trinity uh, Cathedral for signing up. Um, on the rest of the news, as usual, we need more servers, we need more teachers, and and then uh, we, we also need more choir members. So, so if anyone is interested in signing up, uh, please speak to the respective uh, head of congregation working groups. And uh, any, anything yeah. else? Uh, also, those of you who are wanting to be baptized in 2024, all right, on Pentecost, and confirm in 2024 on St. Augustine's Day, uh, the new baptism class will begin in October. All right, so WhatsApp me your name, all right, and I will put you into the new, uh, the new group, all right, the new group. So if you have any friends who have not been baptized and they would like to join us here at St. Augustine, you may also invite them to come and join the class. Now this year, we are in what we call cycle one, which means baptism class will be in English for brothers and sisters who are like me, who couldn't read Chinese, but can speak it, but prefer to read uh, in English and to discuss in English. So this will be an English cycle for the baptism and confirmation. Uh, so do join us. Uh, for those of them who would prefer to have the baptism and confirmation class in Cantonese, they can join the baptism and confirmation class at Holy uh, Trinity Cathedral, which will be taught by Ada Leung, all right, Ada Leung. So, so there's a choice uh, uh, for everyone. Uh, we will then uh, post this notice uh, 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 in the uh, uh, pew sheet next week. Uh, and also, uh, we are again starting the Bible study group in September. So the notice will also be uh, posted and we are uh, having a break uh, for, for August uh, uh, since everyone is so busy having a revenge holiday. All right, so we will only begin the Bible study class in September again. All right. Thank you, Ken and Eric. Right, let us stand for the recessional hymn. 